Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Last week, more than 500 City Hall employees participated in an active shooter drill as part of their annual emergency response training. The drills prepare city employees for an emergency and also challenges employees to consider how they would help ensure the safety of City Hall visitors. Members of the KCPD SWAT team, along with fire department personnel, participated in the exercise. The city's corporate safety division coordinated the event. Fire or weather related drills are routinely held at various city facilities throughout the year so that employees are prepared in case of a real emergency. We just finished our first ever uh, active shooter drill for City Hall today. It went amazingly well. We had more than 500 people participate. Uh, we had uh, tactical squads from the police department came and uh, swept through floors in the building. Uh, they were followed up by EMS from the fire department who came through and helped care for the people that, who were uh, simulated being wounded. It's really important that we do drills like this, active shooter drills, annually just to prepare our folks for what might happen. It goes into our rotation of uh, drills just like fire drills and severe weather drills. Once again this year, the Missouri Classic comes to Arrowhead Stadium on September 6th as two teams from historically black universities, the Lincoln University Blue Tigers and the Langston University Lions, meet on the gridiron to compete in this Midwest rivalry. At a recent press conference, city officials, representatives from the Chiefs organization, and coaching staff from both schools held a news conference to announce the weekend-long citywide festivities. Well, this brings in a tremendous amount of, of revenue for the city because the people that come here don't just uh, drive in that morning, watch the game in the afternoon, and drive home that night. The great bulk of them come in early. It, it's really a, a weekend of events, and uh, they'll come in early, stay here at, at hotels, they'll, they'll go shopping, they'll go to restaurants here, they'll enjoy all of Kansas City. So it really has a tremendous economic boost for the whole city. September 6th is going to be a great day here at Kansas City, right here at Arrowhead, where Lincoln University and Langston University are going to come together, and it's going to be a brawl. These teams are going to go, and they're going to kick off, and it's going to, ha it's going to be a lot of fun right here at Arrowhead Stadium. I'm encouraging folks to come out. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Fall is just around the corner and September promises to be a busy month at Bartle Hall with charity events, festivals, and entertainment. Get ready to party. Fiesta Hispania is taking over Barney Alice Plaza for the 29th year. This event recognizes the significant role and contribution Hispanics have played in the development of the United States. With an average overall attendance of more than 30,000 people, Fiesta Hispania is now the largest free admission public Hispanic event in the metro area and the Midwest. Grammy award-winning gospel greats Fred Hammond and Donnie McClurkin take the stage at the Music Hall on September 19th as part of the Festival of Praise 2014 tour. Also, the stage production of Mrs. Independent, a play featuring Robin Givens, Christopher William, and Dottie Peoples, raises its curtain at the Music Hall on October 3rd through 4th. What happens when a $250,000 a year lawyer wife clashes with her $40,000 a year auto mechanic husband who believes that the man is the head of the house? Find out in this play based on a true story. Tickets for both events are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium Box Office. This year's Adorn Style Show and Brunch on Saturday, September 20th in the Convention Center's Grand Ballroom promises to be bigger and better than ever. Guests will discover the latest fashion trends presented by professional runway models, enjoy creatively designed tablescapes, and a delicious brunch as well as experience unique shopping at the marketplace of exclusive boutiques and local merchants. For ticket information, go to harvestball.org. To learn about even more events, as well as ticket information, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar. Or call 816-513-5000. occurs, the Kansas City Fire Department is there to assist. 
No one expects an emergency, but there are a few things we should know ahead of time, just in case. Chief Harris, how do I know when to call 911? Well, you should call 911 anytime you have a medical emergency or there is threat to property, such as any fire-related emergencies. Of course, if you have question on whether or not it is an emergency, always err on the set of caution and call 911. If I think I need to call 911, what should I do? Well, first off, don't panic. Find a phone and call 911. It may take a few seconds to get connected, but they will answer the phone. Just, again, don't hang up and don't panic. Well, then third, know what you will be asked. First, it's the where. Where is the emergency? Always be aware of your surroundings and where you are. Try to keep watch out for road signs, business names, intersections, whenever you may travel. Give the dispatcher the address and be sure to know the phone number you are calling from. The dispatcher may need to call you back for more information. Then next, the why. Tell us exactly what happened and why. We're going to then ask you a set of questions about the patient and that will give us a better understanding on what's going on and why. What else might happen? Next after that, we'll give you a set of instructions to better help the patient. This can be anything from bleeding control, how to deliver a baby, CPR, choking instructions, or just the simple instructions on reassuring the patient that help is on the way. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Unlock the door for us. Put away any family pets. Um, gather a list of their medicines. And that helps us assist the patient. Remember also to not hang up until the dispatcher tells you to. For more information about the Kansas City Fire Department, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search for KC Fire. For additional videos, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search for FYI KC. because we have some great partners. But before I talk about them, I want to talk about you. 
and I want to talk about the kids in this city. The over 10,000 kids that have participated in basketball, volleyball, soccer, Club KC, Arts Tech, going to movies at the library this summer. Every one of them had a good time. They had a safe place to go and a safe place to be and they got to hang out with their friends, which is what every young person wants to do. I did when I was growing up, you did when you were growing up, that's what we want to do. They get to do it too. Because even though there are places that, they, that they're not necessarily always wanted to be, they're wanted to be at our stuff every single night during the summer on Fridays and Saturdays. So thanks to all of them that participated and thanks to all of you for participating. You know, we have to give a huge thanks to Mark McHenry, the Parks Director. You really need to understand that our Kansas City Parks are the envy of cities across this entire nation and our Parks Department is recognized as being one of the best, if not the best, Parks Department in the entire nation. We take care of a ton of parks and a lot of people in them. So thank you to Mark McHenry. to the Parks Board led by Jean-Paul Chiron, to City Manager Troy Schulte, who always is behind the scenes working, but without him we couldn't get anything done, and to the members of the City Council who help in every way and certainly help with financing all of our summer youth activities. I also want to thank KCPD. KCPD has made some changes under the leadership of Chief Forte. Chief Forte is trying to do things in a different way to bring police into the communities and the neighborhoods to break down those barriers, and it's working. So thank you to Chief Forte for helping to make the program safe, providing police officers every weekend. All of what we're doing here is to make sure that we are reaching out to the youth of this city and offering them an opportunity to be mentored and offering them an opportunity to have some fun. So let's have some fun tonight. Let's stay cool. Let's stay frosty. Everything's good. Thanks a lot, folks. The City of Kansas City, Missouri Environmental Management Commission presented the 12th Annual Environmental Achievement Awards to representatives of three city departments at a ceremony last week. These awards recognize innovative approaches to environmental challenges and encourage a culture of reducing waste while conserving resources. The 2014 award winners are Marlene Leontz from the Public Works Department. She expanded recycling efforts at city events and facilities and increased community outreach. Ryan Robertson and the General Services Department developed an enterprise sustainability platform that monitors and tracks energy use data in 200 city buildings. This data is analyzed to improve energy efficiency and to forecast future energy needs. Charles Harris and Dale Perkins in the General Services Department implemented solar energy installation on more than 60 city-owned buildings. This project leveraged partnerships with KCPNL and Brightergy to reduce energy costs and improve air quality. Joel Taylor with the Aviation Department received an honorable mention for his work to renovate the Aviation Field Maintenance Building. This project received a LEEDS silver recognition by replacing the old HVAC system with a more efficient heat pump system. He also improved building lighting and installed water saving fixtures. In observance of the Labor Day holiday, Monday, September 1st, trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day and city offices and the 311 Action Center will be closed. Residents who usually have a Monday trash collection will receive this service on Tuesday, September 2nd. Residents who usually have Friday trash collection will receive this service on Saturday, September 6th. For more information about solid waste collection services, visit kcmo.gov and enter the search word trash or call the 311 Action Center. And here is an easy way to taste the world all in one night. Just head to the Don Bosco Center on Saturday, September 6th. The Northeast Kansas City International Taste and Tour starts at 5 p.m. This is sponsored in part by the Kansas City Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. For more information, just contact the Northeast Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.